Big City lawyer Ed Stevens lost his job and his wife ah. in the same day. So Ed came home to find his high school dream girl he could never ask out. Who are you? Now, Ed's starting a new life. I bought the bowling alley. With a different kind of law practice. Mr. Stevens, the bowling alley lawyer. I own a bowling alley. I am a lawyer. Two separate things. And a different kind of staff. Objection, Your Honor. But Ed never gave up. Cause for my lady. And found out that true friends last a lifetime. To friendship. To friendship. Tonight, NBC proudly presents the show that took America by its heart. The story that proved nice guys can finish first. And the lawyer who came home and bought a bowling alley. Welcome to Stucky Ball, sir. Woo! Ed, The West Wing and Law and & Order. And only Wednesday begins now on NBC. Come here, you skinny bastard. <laughs> come on in, you guys. Come on in, please. How was the flight? Oh, don't ask. I nearly died of embarrassment. Why? I always pre-ordered the kosher meal because they have to make a special so you know it's fresh. Right. But this time they didn't bring enough on the plane, so they made me give my lunch to this Jewish guy. Your father demanded that the man flip a coin for it. Fair is fair, Natalie. He made him go two out of three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm still getting unpacked here. So, uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, not bad, Eddie, not bad. But me, I loved your New York place. I missed that view of the Chrysler building. Yeah, Dad, but, uh, you know, now I have my own backyard, my own garage, and the guy next door drives a Chrysler, so I got a great view of that. Oh, I got a lovely card from Liz. Says she's moved to Soho. Sounds so bohemian, Soho. Have you talked to her? No, actually, I don't talk to a lawyer quite a bit, though. No. Seems like quite a nice guy. Oh, please, you guys, have a seat. Well, what kind of rent they charging these days in Suckyville? Actually, Dad, I, I bought the place. Lock, stock, and plastic upholstery covers. What? Uh, we thought you were just taking a break. A break? You know, from your real life. This is my real life. You, what did you do? I watched a lot of basketball. How come? The girls' JV basketball team needs a new coach. You know, I think I might apply for the job. Well, what happened to the old coach? Oh, she quit. Day after their 47th consecutive loss. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a new school record. Anyway, Coach Carlisle's talking about ending the JV program, which won't exactly do wonders for the girls' self-esteem. That's great. I think you should do that, Molly. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I have always wanted to yell out, Hey! Hit the showers, you punks! Chief, the kids stole the tea again. This just keeps getting funnier. Molly Hudson? Oh, my... Agnes Bushner! Oh, it's my God! It's been forever! You look exactly the same. Yeah, well, you know, minus the psychedelic first t-shirt. Well, oh, um, Carol, sweetie, y you remember Agnes? We, we were classmates. Oh, yeah! Hi, Agnes, how are you? Fine. You? Great. Great. It, it's really good to see you again. Uh-huh. Listen, uh, I'll be in town all week. We have to get together. I'll, I'll call you. Okay. okay. Bye, Aggie. Bye. Bye, Aggie. 
Next. What can I do for you, Phil? No, no, you're doing it, my man. I just love watching you work. It's poetry in motion. You can never tell where the admiration leaves off and the condescension begins. So what's the story? The Fed's finally busting this little dog and pony show? They're close. My parents are visiting. I want them to see I'm running a serious law practice. So I'm trying to play down this whole bowling alley thing. Surely you jest, he said, chuckling. <laughs> and Phil, I'd like to ask you a favor. Do you want me to hide the bowling balls? No, I'd like you to... So, look, don't take this the wrong way. When my parents get here, could you try to... Could you, I mean, not that I don't like you the way you are. I, mean, I do. Spit it out, Edward. We're all friends here. Could you try being a little less Phil? What, what I mean... No, 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 no. No, I read you loud and clear, senor. Don't worry your pretty little head. Really? That'd be great. I won't have to worry. Uh-oh. Here they come. Oh, why don't you let me stash that away for you? Oh, thanks, Phil. No, thank you, Ed. Hey! <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi. Welcome to the uh, law offices of Edward J. Stevens, Esquire. Where? Right here. My very own law office. I didn't realize your office was actually inside the bowling alley. Adjacent to the bowling alley. Adjacent to the bowling alley. Once you pass through this doorway, you're no longer in a bowling alley, you're in a law office. I'm still in the bowling alley. You're not looking at this the right way, Dad. Think of it as a, a strip mall, you know, where there's uh, separate businesses sharing the same physical edifice. My son works in the bowling alley. Do your clients have to change their shoes before you meet with them? No, Mom, they don't. Of all the withering looks I've gotten, that was by far the most withering. I thought my face was, was going to melt off, like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark when they opened that... That box. Art. Right. Does this strike anyone else as just a tiny bit ironic? How so? Well, you know, head cheerleader Carol Vesey worrying about what nerdy little Agnes Bushner thinks of her. <laughs> Come on, I was never anything but nice to her. What? Nothing. I, I, I mean, you were never outright mean to her. But? But you, you never went out of your way to be nice to people like her or us. But I never even knew you guys back then. That's just it. Agnes never got a chance to get to know you the way that, that we do now. So she still thinks of you the way she did in high school. You know, the way we all did. Which would be how exactly? You know what? You have got to taste this shepherd's pie. I, th this is shepherdlicious. Mmm. 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 And I thought, wait a minute. Stucky Vostain's entire act can be considered his intellectual property. And not just his tricks. He doesn't have to just own the tricks, he owns the act. That's pretty neat, huh? <laughs> when we visited you last year in New York, you were working on a $300 billion merger that changed the structure of the national economy. To me, that was neat. Yes, Dad, yes, but back then I was working for corporations. Now I work for people. Party clowns. Magicians, actually. Just one. So far. Excuse me. Phil. Uh, Mom. Dad, this is... Phil. Hi. Hello. So nice to meet you folks. Can I get you anything? Some coffee? Do you have some Sanka? You bet. Ed, there are some gentlemen waiting here to see you. Shall I have them wait, or...? Uh, no, send them in. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. So. Um, uh, Mom, Dad, why don't you uh, stick around and watch me help these clients? Send in the clowns. Uh, third time this month. Damn kids. They think this is funny. Well, this ain't funny. Family Feud. What? Family Feud is funny. I love it when they're playing the feud and somebody guesses an answer and their whole family starts shouting good answer, good answer, but then they get it wrong and Louis Anderson says something hilarious. Louis Anderson is a genius. I prefer the all-new Hollywood squares. Why? 
I got a thing for Whoopi. I'm Frank. This is my buddy Dave. Hi, right, it's Stevens. These are my parents. You guys mind if they hang out while we talk? Are they cool? You can trust them if that's what you mean. I have always been able to tell when people are cool. It is like a gift. And I can see that this man and this woman are cool. Natalie, let's go. Dad, Dad, please. Just... Well, what can I do for you guys? We got serious trouble. You're being sued by a Ted Schmidt, former co-worker at Stuckyville Container. The box factory on the north side. We are box makers by trade. You see that box? Yes. We made that box. Is that right? With giant machines. Okay. So, why is this guy suing you? Well, things can get a little dull down at the plant, so uh, us guys started playing pranks on each other, you know, just to make life more interesting. Once I filled another man's shoes with non-dairy whipped topping, a good time was had by all. So, uh, this guy just got upset over a little prank? A big prank. A very big prank. This is the nicest tea we've ever had. I hope they don't steal it. They won't. I'm gonna hide up here, catch them red-handed, and drag them down to Juvie. You wanna help? Okay. Mouse! Mouse! Have you signed up for that coaching job yet? No, not yet. I was actually on my way down to the gym. Hmm. How would you feel about letting me do it instead? You wanna coach JV basketball? Why? Because I have a basketball Jones. <laughs> Our little run-in with Agnes Bushner really got to you, huh? Yeah, it did. And I want to help those girls out. Besides, why should you always get to be the champion of the underdog? I know you think I spent my high school years on top of the world, but the fact is, I frequently felt like an underdog. Okay, I I'm sorry, sweetie, but you were not an underdog. You, my friend, were an overdog. An overdog? An overdog. So the prank? It's a little complicated, may I? No, absolutely, by means. Your lotto man is jackpot. Please, take this lottery ticket. $20 million. Oh, okay. Now, pay attention. Tonight's winning numbers are... Thirty-four. Ten. Twenty-eight. Three. Forty-nine. And twenty-four. Good luck. This is a win This is a winning ticket. That ticket. That ticket is yours. You gave the ticket to my son. It's his property. Now run. run. Buddy, buddy, relax. The tape is from last Wednesday, but we bought the ticket on Friday using Wednesday's numbers. I get it. So the ticket's worthless. So, Dad, you can sit down. You see, this guy, Ted, he's a lottery freak. Yeah, man, he buys like 20 tickets a week. It is his obsession. So we put this ticket in his pile. Then when it was time for the drawing, we slipped that tape in the VCR. So he thought he won. And I guess when he found out he didn't, he got a little upset. He sued you. He probably just needs a couple of days to cool off. There's a little bit more to it than that. When Ted thought he'd become a millionaire, he went nuts. He quit his job, and he left his wife. Ooh. Now he's holding us responsible. We did not mean to cause him pain. Will you take the case? He's not taking the case. Dad. What do you want me to do? Sit here and fiddle while Rome burns? I'll take the case. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, is my son around? No, Mr. Stevens, I'm afraid he stepped out. Is there something I can help you with? Theater tickets, dinner reservations, a very fun little Cajun place just opened up. No, no thanks. Okay, well, I'll be sure until let you drop by. You have a good day now. <clears throat> uh, listen, Phil... You changed your mind about the Cajun. Terrific. They have popcorn shrimp that are to die for. No, we're concerned about our son. One day he's in New York City, married on the fast track. The next day he's back here, renting shoes. I mean, it's like something snapped. I wasn't going to say anything, but... Yeah? I've been very worried myself, frankly. I think he's lost it. Do you have any idea what's behind this? Well, there's the girl, of course. What girl? 
Hasn't he told you about Carol Vesey? Who's Carol Vanessi? Oh, Mr. Stevens. Mr. Durnford? Yeah? I'm Ed Stevens, the attorney. We spoke on the phone. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I'm here to ask you to give Ted Schmidt his job back. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Look, Mr. Durnford, the only reason the guy quit was because he thought he won the lottery. <laughs> So if you let him come back to work, then, well, perhaps you drop his lawsuit against Frank and David. Those guys have worked for you for a long time. You'd really be helping them out of a jam. Ted Schmidt didn't just quit. I mean, he insulted me. <laughs> I'm sure he did. No, and I can forgive that. Hmm? But what I cannot and will not forgive is that he insulted this company and its product. Did he? Well, I'm sure he, he looked didn't. me right in the face and he said, boxes, who needs them? Well, I don't... Yeah, I will tell you who needs boxes, Mr. Stevens. We all do. You would not want to live in a world without boxes. You could not survive a day in such a world. Oh, yeah, you think you could. But you are wrong. You must be the Stevens. I'm Carol Vesey. Oh, hello, Carol. Please call me Alan. Alan, hi. I'm Natalie. It's so nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Thanks so much for having me to lunch. Is, um, is Ed running late? Oh, Ed won't be joining us. Oh, you no, know, did something come up? Carol, dear, what we discuss at this table has to stay between the three of us. Okay? Okay. Well, uh, Carol, I I'll make this very simple. Um, your relationship with our son is none of our business. We don't care how or why you talked him into buying that bowling alley. What? I, 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 please, dear, just listen to Alan. Well, what will it take to get you to relinquish your hold on my son? My, my hold? Uh, Natalie, could I have the checkbook? What? Five hundred dollars. If you can talk my son into moving back to New York. Mr. Stevens. Thousand dollars? Okay, you know what? It, it, it's, it's time for basketball practice, and I'm going to get going now. Thank you so much for having me to lunch. What? Uh, can we get you something to go? Anything? I can see cars. For tonight, we should get night vision goggles, like Silence and the Lambs. Except we wouldn't be the killers. Uh, I love Jodie Foster in that. She's tough, yet feminine. Clarice was the archetype for the modern female hero. Intelligence and non-threatening beauty combined with moderate physical strength and a strong but not unbreakable moral code. Did you make that up? No, it was on TV Guide Channel. It's a good channel. I am Coach Vessie, and I am here to help you turn your season around. You're the new coach? Yes. So try to contain that enthusiasm, Jenny. I'm just surprised that a former Miss Teen USA would want to bother with us. Oh, I was never Miss Teen USA. <laughs> oh, I guess it's just a rumor. Well, rumor aside, um... I am here because you are a great group of girls and you deserve to know what it feels like to win a game or two. So everybody on your feet, let's go. <whistles> Come on. Everybody up. <whistles> We're going to start with a little basket making. Basket making? Yeah. Yeah, basket making. Um, are the baskets always that high? Uh, they stopped lowering them for us last month. Okay, so for now we'll work on uh, ball throwing. Everybody get into pairs and each, each pair takes a ball. We've only got one ball. Um, one ball? One ball's not a problem. We are going to take turns bouncing this ball and whoever bounces the ball highest wins a fruit roll up. So, I'm going to go first. Okay. Um, calisthenics. Let's go. Everybody now. Mm -hmm. 
No, I'm afraid I can't let you ball with that. It's too bouncy. I need to know everything there is to know about basketball, and I need to know it by tomorrow. I'm going to give you guys the most basic building block for basketball strategy, the pick and roll. Invented in 1894 by Herbert Pick, Alfred Roll. Really? Uh, okay, teach me, right, teach okay, me, okay, teach right, me. Right, okay, okay, let's start it off. You gals guard Mike and I. All right. Okay. Aunt, you guard Mike. Carol, you guard me. All right. Now. All right. Now, step one. Okay. Step one. Mike steps up and sets what's called a pick. There it is. Step two. I drive to the basket, thereby forcing Nancy to switch from guarding Mike oh, oh. to guarding me. When this occurs, step three. Mike rolls to the hoop. I hit him with a sweet dish. Mike scores. We go home, hero. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's really sneaky. I like it. Okay. Now you try. You try. Okay. Let's go, buddy. That's allowed. That's called the uh, basketball pat. It's allowed. I see. I even called you buddy. All right, let's go. Pick and roll. Pick okay, and roll time. Okay. 49 and 24. Good luck. Oh, my God. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. I just won the lottery. I just won the lottery. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I just won $20 million. $20 million. Mr. Zelter, would you care to tell the court what happened next? Well, he ran off before I could tell him the truth. Then he went home and told his wife he was leaving her. Mr. Zelter, why did you and Mr. Gursky play this silly prank on Mr. Schmidt? You know, for laughs. We're always playing jokes on each other down there. <laughs> Last week, Jim Stackhouse put a live ferret in Arnie Scaputo's locker. That was hilarious. And did you have any reasonable expectation that Mr. Schmidt Upon thinking that he won the lottery, he would suddenly up and quit, leave his wife? No, sir. In fact, when Mr. Schmidt began unexpectedly telling his boss, Mr. Dernford, that he might quit his job, what did you do? That was me rushing in saying, dude, dude, wait, dude. Thank you. Okay, Susan, you're going to set the pick on Sabrina. That means, Laura, you got it. You got to guard Jenny. There you go. Now, Jenny, roll out to the basket, Susan. Roll out. Jenny, pass to her. There you go. There you go. Yes! That's it. That is a pick and roll. You testified that you and Mr. Gursky had no idea that my client, Mr. Schmidt, would behave the way he did. Is that right? That's right. Ever hear Mr. Schmidt complain about his job? Whoa. Yeah, but we all bitch and moan about it. When he sat down every week to watch those lotto drawings, didn't he ever say something to the effect of, if I win, I'm moving to some desert island? Or, hey, take a good look at me, boys. When one of these tickets cashes in, I'm leaving this rat hole. Well, yeah, but that was just talk. Really? Turned out not to be just talk, didn't it? Hello. Little spin. Ooh. Oh, goodbye. A little, I like that. I like that. I'm going to teach that to the girls. See, that little spin in the pick and roll, I won many a basketball game, my friend. Ed, you should have seen the girls today. They were, they were picking, and they were rolling, and they were laughing, and I know this sounds really corny, but it's like they were brand new people all of a sudden. That's great. You know, you're really doing some good there. Yeah. And I think that there's something I have to tell you. Oh, Carol, I already know about your attraction for me. Just let's quit torturing ourselves and let's start doing it already. It's about your parents. What about my parents? They had lunch with me. They had lunch with you? Actually, they wanted me to try to convince you to go back to New York. What? They offered me $1,000. What? I just wanted you to know. You know, I, I give up. You know, I'm just... I'm going to ask them to leave. No, 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 Ed, don't do that. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? Why should I not do that? I mean, they obviously think their son's a loser. I saw them in court today. They're looking at me like my life's some kind of joke. You know, I mean, they like me back in New York, right? The, the wife and the big job at the prestigious New York City law firm handling million-dollar clients. And now, now they, they just don't get it. Do you think your life was better back then? Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was on paper, but... What? Back then, I never got to play basketball on a weekday afternoon. Ha! Got it. Nice shot. Bye.
Ori. <laughs> I don't know how they got it again. They're only gone a little while. Once again, we are sucky ball. I think the thieves are masters of deception. Not unlike illusionist David Copperfield. Once I saw him turn a fat guy into a pony. He's a real showman. There you go. Thanks, boss. There he is. Hey, hey, you guys, can I talk to you two for a minute? Of course. Sure. Okay. So far, I've been very patient with the two of you, but this time you have gone too far. Honey, you seem upset. See, seem upset? Seem upset? Ma, Ma, are you kidding me? I don't speak to your mother that way. Sorry. Eh? Look, were either of you going to tell me about your little lunch with Carol Vesey? We didn't have lunch with Carol Vesey. Alan. Natalie, you may be bluffing. Dad, you offered her $1,000 to convince me to move back to New York City. Do you have any idea how humiliating that is? Ed, now listen to me. When we came here, we were worried about you. We're parents. We're allowed. So we... we poked around a little. I'm sorry. The truth is, we learned something. We learned that you're happy here. I watched you in court today, and I saw a certain look in your eye I never saw when you worked with that Wall Street firm. What your father's trying to say, dear, is now we know that you're in the right place. You're where you should be. Really? Really? <laughs> so, we're headed back for Florida. Well, when? We're leaving for the airport now. N now? Why so soon? Our work here is done. Goodbye, son. Bye, darling. Bye, Bye Mom. <laughs> Hi. In honor of your complete mastery of the pick and roll, I have good news and I have great news. First, the good news. My cousin works at Shirt Palace over at the mall. Cut me a deal on these. New uniforms. Names on the back, numbers, the works. Oh my gosh. They're awesome. What's the great news? I challenged the varsity girls team to a scrimmage. <laughs> what? But it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You had a chance to play in a real game at night with a scoreboard and a, and a gym full of fans. Miss Fessy, I think you're glossing over a basic fact here, which is that the varsity girls, they're going to kick our... Do you mind if I say asses? No, sure. Sure, go ahead. Asses. Where's your pride? Do you know what their coach said to me? He said we probably wouldn't even hit double digits. We probably won't hit double digits. Listen. We're going to play this game. Because it's not about the game. It's about not getting pushed around anymore. It's about not being treated like losers. Because you're not losers. It's about going out there and showing the world that you are not losers on the court and off. And win or lose Friday night, that is just what we're going to do. Did you just make that up? Yes. Yes, I did. It was pretty good. Mr. Schmidt, you testified that this prank ruined your life? Yes, it did. I was happy, had a solid job, wife. Now I have nothing. Help me with something. Your attorney, Mr. Murphy, he, he keeps claiming that my client should have reasonably expected that winning the lottery caused you to quit your job, leave your wife. You're always grumbling about how miserable your life was. I'm confused. Which was it, Mr. Schmidt? Were you happy with your life, or were you unhappy? You, you don't have to look to your attorney. Let me help. Your Honor, I would like to submit in evidence Mr. Schmidt's last five employee performance reports. The last one states, in part... Ted is habitually late and calls him sick more than any other employee in the department. His attitude is terrible, and as a result, his overall job performance leaves much to be desired. That doesn't sound like a happy guy who loves his job. Hey, it's just a job. Yes, Mr. Schmidt. It's just a job. <clears throat> Mr. Schmidt's financial records for the past several years, Your Honor, in which I noticed that you've written several checks to Dr. Rachel Garner over the last year and a half. What kind of doctor is she? She's a psychologist. Specializing in? Marriage counseling. So, the happy marriage was... Hey, we're working on it. You're working on it, except I have here your personal American Express bill 
which shows several charges to the stadium motor lodge, which happens to be less than five miles from your house. Ted, were you going there with your wife? Objection. Overruled. Answer the question, Mr. Schmidt. No, I was seeing someone. I'm very sorry. Your perfect life was ruined, Mr. Schmidt. Objection. Withdrawn. What are you guys doing here? Was the flight canceled? Come inside, Ed. Is everything okay? Follow me to the living room. Hello? Hi, Ed. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. Uncle George, right? <laughs> it's been a while, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, you look more and more like your pop. Thanks, I guess. Uh, would you like some coffee or a uh, menthol cigarette? No, thanks. Phil, what are, what are you doing here? Excuse me, sir, do I know you? Oh, this is Godfrey. He's my sponsor. No, thanks. <clears throat> Someone likes to tell me what's, what's going on? Ed, life is like a footpath through a dark African jungle. As long as you stick to the path, you're okay. But it's very tempting to wander astray. Look over there. A colorful bird. Over there. A fragrant plant life. When I was your age, I walked off my path. You name it, I did it. Booze, whores, gambling. Smank. But I lived to tell a story. Thanks to friends and family, like we have here. We love you, Ed. What the hell is this? An intervention. If we have to chase these kids, don't worry. I'm a big man, but I'm also quick. I once caught a live chicken with my bare hands like Rocky Balboa. I've got a question. Yeah. If you took a hamburger, and put it in a blender and blended it up so it became like a hamburger sauce. And then you took that hamburger sauce and put it onto another hamburger. Would that hamburger then have doubled the hamburger flavor of a regular hamburger? No. It would be just like eating two hamburgers. But it's not two hamburgers. It's one hamburger with hamburger sauce on top. You should send that into Reader's Digest. You might be fooling the rest of them, but you're not fooling me. People like us, we're the best liars in the world because we get so much practice lying to ourselves. You're having a nervous breakdown. If you're going to ride, don't ride the white horse. All right, enough. Enough. What is with you people? Just leave me alone. There's nothing wrong with me. Dad? Oh, look, um, I'd like to have a private talk with my son, would you? Would you mind going into the kitchen and have some cold cuts? Hmm? Look, Ed, I'm sorry. Maybe I... Maybe I took things a little too far. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Sometimes I go overboard when I'm trying to make a point. Well, if your point is you're disappointed and you're unhappy with the way I'm, I'm living my life, well, trust me, your point's been made. I just didn't want to see you make the same mistake that I made. Dad... When you were about five years old, I was a junior manager at the drapery plant, and one day I got a call... I know the story, Dad, I know the story. <laughs> they said that they wanted to make you a vice president, move you down to Dallas, and Mom hated it there, so, so you turned him down, you stayed in Stuckyville. I... No, 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 that's not quite true, Ed. Your mother was fine about Dallas. I turned it down because I was afraid. Afraid to go down there and get the crap kicked out of me and come calling back to Stuckyville. The best opportunity of my career, and I let it go. Now, I look at you and I see a guy who's been thrown off a horse and is too scared to get back up. But if you don't, you'll never know what you could have achieved. What if I decided to play a prank and stole the stop sign from the intersection of Maine and Maple? Whoops. 
Somebody gets killed. Sorry, just a prank. Would I be held responsible? Of course I would. In our society, people are responsible for their actions. Your Honor, this prank ruined this man's life. I ask that you hold these men responsible for their actions. Thank you. Your Honor, two important points. One, yes, stealing stop signs can make one reasonably expect that there will be a crash. But my clients could never reasonably expect Ted Schmidt would alter his life so dramatically, which leads me to point two. If I may, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I sympathize with Ted Schmidt. I, I really do. I used to be a lot like him. You know, I was just cruising through life. You know, I had a wife, had a job in a prestigious New York City law firm, and then one day I was fired. I came home and I found my wife sleeping with a mailman. That was no prank. But let me tell you something. For some people, no matter how it comes about, having their life changed may be the best thing that ever happens to them. Ted Schmidt is seeking damages. Well, there are no damages. Because Ted Schmidt is much better off now than he ever was before. He hated his job. His marriage was in shambles. And these are the reasons that he decided to change his life. The lottery ticket, the lottery ticket just gave him the courage to do so. Thank you. Everybody's going to the basketball game tonight. The kids who steal the tea will probably be there too. If the kids are at the game, then we could go to the game without putting the tea in jeopardy. You can fasten it down extra tight just in case. Let's get the tools. I feel like this experience has brought us closer together. I disagree. Supposing I accept Mr. Stevens' claim that Ted Schmidt is better off now than he was before, can I then conclude that there are no damages? No. However, damages or no damages, I'm convinced that the defendants could not have reasonably expected Mr. Schmidt's reaction to their prank. I therefore find for the defendants Frank Selter and Dave Gursky. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> You're welcome, Frank. <laughs> Congratulations, honey. Thank you. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Girls forgot to show up. Oh, they're coming. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, please put your hands together for the women's JV basketball team. Your second. He's not going anywhere now. Where'd you learn how to do that? In the joint. Come on, the game's already started. Let's go.
Wait, what are you doing calling a time out? With six seconds left, we are ahead by 60 points. What's the point? The point is we have the ball. There are six seconds left on the clock, and we are going to score double digits. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. Oh, is that right? Well, we'll see about that. Starters in. We're not going to let them score. Come on, girls. Come on in. Come on in for the huddle. Come on, girls. Huddle around. Come on in. Okay. This is what we're going to do. All right. Kate, Diane, Cara, with the three of you to clear off to one side. That's going to leave Jenny and Susan. You know what to do. Pick and roll. Right. Wouldn't this be a good time for another one of those speeches? I believe in you guys. That's it? Win one for the Gipper. That's good. Okay. okay. All right. Go team! All right, get out there! Let's see it! the greatest 58 point loss in the history of sport. <laughs> Look at him. That's right. That's right, Kenny. Hey, oh, there he is. <laughs> hey, Dad, you got a minute? Sure. I'll go inside. <laughs> on. Yeah, that was quite a job on the microphone. I didn't knew you had such a powerful voice. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Look, Dad, I want to say thank you for coming down here to help me. Well, I'm, I'm not sure we succeeded. Dad, remember how you said you are afraid of taking the risk of going down to Dallas? Yeah. Well, for me, taking the risk was coming back down here and doing all of this. Staying in New York with the big job, that would have been the safe road. Can you at least build a separate entrance for the law practice so it's not literally right inside a bowling alley? No, Dad. I really can't. But hey, it's on the bright side. You know, for the rest of your life, you're going to get the ball for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something. <laughs> that's something. Choose you to pay for it. Yo, well. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What did you do? I watched a lot of basketball. How come? The girls' JV basketball team needs a new coach. Yeah, I think I might apply for the job. Well, what happened to the old coach? Oh, she quit. Day after their 47th consecutive loss. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a new school <laughs> record. Anyway, Coach Carlisle's talking about ending the JV program, which won't exactly do wonders for the girls' self-esteem. That's great. I think you should do that, Molly. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I have always wanted to yell out, Hey! Hit the showers, you punks! Chief, the kids stole the tea again. This just keeps getting funnier. Molly Hudson? Oh, my... Agnes Bushner! Oh, it's my God! It's been forever! 
You look exactly the same. Yeah, well, you know, minus the psychedelic first T-shirt. Well, oh, um, Carol, sweetie, y you remember Agnes? We, we were classmates. Oh, yeah. Hi, Agnes. How are you? Fine. You? Great. Great. It, it's really good to see you again. Uh-huh. Listen, uh, I'll be in town all week. We have to get together. I'll, I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Aggie. Bye. Bye, Aggie. Ness? What can I do for you, Phil? No, no, you're doing it, my man. I just love watching you work. It's poetry in motion. Never tell where the admiration leaves off and the condescension begins. So what's the story? The Fed's finally busting this little dog and pony show? Close. My parents are visiting and want them to see I'm running a serious law practice, so I'm trying to play down this whole bowling alley thing. Surely you jest, he said, chuckling. <laughs> and Phil, I'd like to ask you a favor. You want me to hide the bowling balls? No, I'd like you to... to... Look, don't take this the wrong way. When my parents get here, could you try to... Could you, I mean, not that I don't like you the way you are. I, mean, I do. Spit it out, Edward. We're all friends here. Could you try being a little less Phil? What, what I mean no, by No, 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 no. No, I read you loud and clear, senor. Don't worry your pretty little head. Really? That'd be great. I won't have to worry. Uh-oh. Here they come. Oh, why don't you let me stash that away for you? Oh, this is a, win this is a winning ticket. To that ticket. That ticket is yours. You gave the ticket to my son. It's his property. Now run. Buddy, run. buddy, relax. The tape is from last Wednesday. But we bought the ticket on Friday using Wednesday's numbers. I get it. So the ticket's worthless. So, Dad, you can sit down. You see, this guy, Ted, he's a lottery freak. Yeah, man, he buys like 20 tickets a week. It is his obsession. So we put this ticket in his pile. Then when it was time for the drawing, we slipped that tape in the VCR. So he thought he won. And I guess when he found out he didn't, he got a little upset. He sued you. He probably just needs a couple of days to cool off. There's a little bit more to it than that. When Ted thought he'd become a millionaire, he went nuts. He quit his job, and he left his wife. Ooh. Now he's holding us responsible. We did not mean to cause him pain. Will you take the case? He's not taking the case. Dad. What do you want me to do? Sit here and fiddle while Rome burns? I'll take the case. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, is my son around? No, Mr. Stevens, I'm afraid he stepped out. Is there something I can help you with? Theater tickets, dinner reservations, a very fun little Cajun place just opened up. No, no thanks. Okay, well, I'll be sure until let you drop by. You have a good day now. <clears throat> uh, listen, Phil... You changed your mind about the Cajun. Terrific. They have popcorn shrimp that are to die for. No, we're concerned about our son. One day he's in New York City, married on the fast track. The next day he's back here, renting shoes. I mean, it's like something snapped. I wasn't going to say anything, but... Yeah? I've been very worried myself, frankly. I think he's lost it. Do you have any idea what's behind this? Well, there's the girl, of course. What girl? Hasn't he told you about Carol Vesey? Who's Carol Vanessi? Oh, Mr. Stevens. Mr. Durnford? Yeah? I'm Ed Stevens, the attorney. We spoke on the phone. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I'm here to ask you to give Ted Schmidt his job back. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Look, Mr. Durnford, the only reason the guy quit was because he thought he won the lottery. <laughs> so if you let him come back to work, then, well, perhaps you drop his lawsuit against Frank and David. Those guys have worked for you for a long time. You'd really be helping them out of a jam. Ted Schmidt didn't just quit. I mean, he insulted me. <laughs> I'm sure he did. No, and I can forget that. Hmm? But what I cannot will... Thanks, Phil. No, thank you, Ed. Hey! 
Hi, honey. Hi. Welcome to the uh, law offices of Edward J. Stevens, Esquire. Where? Right here. My very own law office. I didn't realize your office was actually inside the bowling alley. Adjacent to the bowling alley. Adjacent to the bowling alley. Once you pass through this doorway, you're no longer in a bowling alley. You're in a law office. I'm still in the bowling alley. You're not looking at this the right way, Dad. Think of it as a, a strip mall, you know, where there's uh, separate businesses sharing the same physical edifice. My son works in the bowling alley. Do your clients have to change their shoes before you meet with them? No, Mom, they don't. Of all the withering looks I've gotten, that was by far the most withering. I thought my face was, was going to melt off, like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark when they opened that... That box art. Right. Does this strike anyone else as just a tiny bit ironic? How so? Well, you know, head cheerleader Carol Vesey worrying about what nerdy little Agnes Bushner thinks of her. <laughs> Come on, I was never anything but nice to her. What? Nothing. I, I, I mean, you were never outright mean to her. But? But you, you never went out of your way to be nice to people like her or us. But I never even knew you guys back then. That's just it. Agnes never got a chance to get to know you the way that, that we do now. So she still thinks of you the way she did in high school. You know, the way we all did. Which would be how exactly? You know what? You have got to taste this shepherd's pie. I, th this is shepherdlicious. Mmm. 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 And I thought, wait a minute. Stucky Bill Stan's entire act can be considered his intellectual property. And not just his tricks. He doesn't have to just own the tricks, he owns the act. That's pretty neat, huh? When we visited you last year in New York, you were working on a $300 billion merger that changed the structure of the national economy. To me, that was neat. Yes, Dad, yes, but back then I was working for corporations. Now I work for people. Party clowns. Magicians, actually. Just one. So far. Excuse me. Phil. Uh, Mom. Dad, this is... Phil. Hi. Hello. So nice to meet you folks. Can I get you anything? Some coffee? Do you have some Sanka? You bet. Ed, there are some gentlemen waiting here to see you. Shall I have them wait, or...? Uh, no, send them in. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. So. Um, uh, Mom, Dad, why don't you uh, stick around and watch me help these clients? Send in the clowns. Uh, third time this month. Damn kids. They think this is funny. Well, this ain't funny. Family Feud. What? Family Feud is funny. I love it when they're playing the feud and somebody guesses an answer and their whole family starts shouting good answer, good answer, but then they get it wrong and Louis Anderson says something hilarious. Louis Anderson is a genius. I prefer the all new Hollywood squares. Why? I got a thing for Whoopi. I'm Frank. This is my buddy Dave. Hi, right, it's Stevens. These are my parents. You guys mind if they hang out while we talk? Are they cool? You can trust them if that's what you mean. I have always been able to tell when people are cool. It is like a gift. And I can see that this man and this woman are cool. Natalie, let's go. Dad, Dad, please. Just, well, what can I do for you guys? We got serious trouble. You're being sued by Ted Schmidt, former co-worker at Stuckyville Container. The box factory on the north side. We are box makers by trade. You see that box? Yes. We made that box. Is that right? With giant machines. Okay. So, why is this guy suing you? Well, things can get a little dull down at the plant, so uh, us guys started playing pranks on each other, you know, just to make life more interesting. Once I filled another man's shoes with non-dairy whipped topping, a good time was had by all. So, uh, this guy just got upset over a little prank? A big prank. A very big prank. This is the nicest tea we've ever had. I hope they don't steal it. They won't. I'm gonna hide up here, catch them red-handed, and drag them down to Juvie. You wanna help? Okay. Mouse! Mouse! Have you signed 
signed up for that coaching job yet. No, not yet. I was actually on my way down to the gym. Hmm. How would you feel about letting me do it instead? You want to coach JV basketball? Why? Because I have a basketball, Jones. <laughs> Our little run-in with Agnes Bushner really got to you, huh? Yeah, it did. And I want to help those girls out. Besides, why should you always get to be the champion of the underdog? I know you think I spent my high school years on top of the world, but the fact is, I frequently felt like an underdog. Okay, I I'm sorry, sweetie, but you were not an underdog. You, my friend, were an overdog. An overdog? An overdog. So the prank? It's a little complicated, may I? No, absolutely, by all means. Your lotto man is jackpot. Please. Take this lottery ticket. $20 million. Okay. Now, pay attention. Tonight's winning numbers are... Thirty-four. Ten. Twenty-eight. Three. Forty-nine. And twenty-four. Good luck. Big City Lawyer Ed Stevens lost his job and his wife uh. in the same day. So Ed came home to find his high school dream girl he could never ask out. Who are you? Now, Ed's starting a new life. I bought the bowling alley. With a different kind of law practice. Mr. Stevens, the bowling alley lawyer. I own a bowling alley. I am a lawyer. Two separate things. And a different kind of staff. Objection, Your Honor. But Ed never gave up. Draws for my lady. And found out that true friends last a lifetime. To friendship. To friendship. Tonight, NBC proudly presents the show that took America by its heart. The story that proved nice guys can finish first. And the lawyer who came home and bought a bowling alley. Welcome to Stucky Ball, sir. Woo! Ed, The West Wing and Law and & Order. An all-new Wednesday begins now on NBC. Come here, you skinny bastard. <laughs> come on in, you guys. Come on in, please. How was the flight? Oh, don't ask. I nearly died of embarrassment. Why? I always pre-ordered the kosher meal because they have to make it special so you know it's fresh. Right. But this time they didn't bring enough on the plane, so they made me give my lunch to this Jewish guy. Your father demanded that the man flip a coin for it. Fair's fair, Natalie. He made him go two out of three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm still getting unpacked here. So, uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, not bad, Eddie, not bad. But me, I love your New York place. I miss that view of the Chrysler building. Yeah, Dad, but, uh, you know, now I have my own backyard, my own garage, and the guy next door drives a Chrysler, so I got a great view of that. Oh, I got a lovely card from Liz. Says she's moved to Soho. Sounds so bohemian, Soho. Have you talked to her? No, actually, I don't talk to a lawyer quite a bit, though. No. Seems like quite a nice guy. Oh, please, you guys, have a seat. And what kind of rent they charging these days in Suckyville? Actually, Dad, I, I bought the place. Lock, stock, and plastic upholstery covers. What? Uh, we thought you were just taking a break. A break? You know, from your real life. This is my real life. 